In this video, I want to talk about the benefits of consuming organ meat. More specifically, I'm going to talk about why you should consider adding, adding organs to your diet, the specific health benefits of the most popular organs that you can find out there, how a consumer cook them, and how to source them. Because sourcing organs, is, especially fresh organs, is not always easy. In a nutshell, organs are an excellent source of micronutrients. They are not anything magical by any means. They are not a magic pill, so to say. They are just incredibly rich in micronutrients, including vitamins, minerals, peptides, enzymes, and cofactors that can help prevent deficiencies, which are very common in our society maybe based on lifestyle or because of lifestyle factors like uh, elevated stress levels all the time, you know, increased activity levels, maybe you'll work out a lot, or but also because our food, generally speaking, is less nutrient dense than it was a couple of hundred years ago because of depleting soil quality or depleted soils and lower soil quality and a number of other reasons. And the problem with micronutrient deficiencies is that it can lead to a host of issues. For example, chronic eye infections, chronic fatigue syndrome or low energy levels, frequent viral or bacterial infections, hair loss, hormonal imbalances such as thyroid issues, iron deficiency anemia, osteoporosis or cardiovascular issues, all of those can be caused by micronutrient deficiencies. Now, of course, there are several lifestyle factors that can cause those issues or contribute to those issues, but I've seen that in particular nutrient deficiencies are often a factor in the development of those issues. So there is this saying out there, like supports like, meaning that you know, if you consume liver, then you support the health of your own liver. And I don't think it's quite that simple. I don't think that just by consuming a certain organ, you're going to improve the function of your own organ. However, it is true that organs usually are rich sources of the very micronutrients that they need to function optimally. Just to give you one example, um, the liver requires a lot of B vitamins to function optimally, and the liver also happens to be a rich source of many B vitamins. So, in other words, if you suffer from deficiencies that cause poor liver function, for example, consuming liver can help mitigate those deficiencies and help your liver work better. Now, I'm not a medical doctor, so check out my medical disclaimer. Nothing of what I say in this video should be considered medical advice. However, I'd like to share with you some of the health benefits of specific organs that you can find in the store or that you can find in as freeze-dried capsules if fresh organs are not your thing. And I'm going to talk about some of the specific micronutrients that you can find in those organs and how they potentially map to health benefits. So let's start with the adrenal glands. The adrenal gland has specific peptides that help regulate sodium potassium levels that can influence how your body responds to stress. If you're deficient in some of those peptides, then your body might have a harder time appropriately dealing with the daily stressors of our lives. Those peptides can also help uh, regulate blood sugar levels and keep your blood sugar in balance and even influence the production of certain sex hormones. The brain, on the other hand, is a rich source of certain micronutrients that can make high-density lipoprotein, the good cholesterol, so to say, and one of those is called sphingomyelin. It's also a rich source of brain-derived neurotropic factor, or BDNF, and that helps or protects nerve cells so they don't get damaged or die prematurely. It's also a rich source of B12 and vitamin C, which are important for brain health, for energy production, and for immunity. And it's also a good source of heme iron. And if you're low on iron, then you might you know, suffer from chronic fatigue or just low energy levels. And by consuming brain, you can mitigate some of those deficiencies and mitigate some of those potential issues that are associated with those deficiencies. The eye, for example, is a rich source of vitamin A. Again, you know, you need, the eye needs a lot of vitamin A or retinol in particular to function optimally. By consuming eyes, beef eyes, for example, you can supply those micronutrients to support your own eye health. It's also a rich source of omega-3 fatty acids, of zinc, and of certain antioxidants that help protect the eye from light or light-induced damage like lutein or zeaxanthin. The gallbladder, it's not a very popular organ, I admit, and it doesn't taste very good, I would say, but the bile and gallbladder is a rich source of vitamin A, D, E, and K, which is important, again, for eye health, for hormone production, for immunity and dental health. 
And there is actually a Filipino soup called papaitan. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that uses gallbladder as one of the ingredients. So if, if, if you're in the area or if you're Filipino, definitely check that out and see if you can find a recipe and make that at home. The heart is a very popular organ. It's also one of the best tasting ones, I would argue, because it's predominantly muscle tissue. So it tastes like other muscle meat, like a steak. Uh, and it's a rich source of CoQ10, which is important for optimal heart health. It's also a good source of B12, which is important for energy and brain. It has a lot of collagen, which is important for joint and skin health. And it also has elastin, which is, again, an important factor in keeping your skin elastic and looking good and working optimally. Intestines is another interesting one that I don't think many people appreciate, um, but it's a, intestines are a rich source of vitamin B12 and selenium, which is important for the body's immune response. And there is actually a South American soup called mondongo. I've tried it many, many years ago in Costa Rica at my in-laws, and I didn't really like it, mostly because I had, you know, in my, the picture in my head of what I'm eating, intestines, uh, that wasn't very pleasant, but later on I actually learned to like it and it tastes absolutely delicious. If you get over that mental hurdle of, you know, eating intestines, it actually tastes very good. And last time I had it in Colombia, it was absolutely delicious and I would have it obviously again. Here in the US, you can't find intestines uh, very easily, so it's a little bit of a, a little bit tricky to find it. But in South America and Central America, definitely uh, look up Mondongo if you're ever in the area. Kidney. Kidneys are a good source of thiamine oxidase, or DOA, which is an enzyme that helps break down histamine. And that's important if you suffer from allergies. And it also supports the body's autoimmune issue, or it fights autoimmune issues and helps the body's immune system to react appropriately to certain allergens. You know, so it doesn't go overboard and you suffer from either autoimmune issues or allergies, but it keeps it nice and balanced. And so if you suffer from any you know, seasonal allergies, maybe consuming kidney is a good way to kind of balance that out a little bit and hopefully reduce your symptoms. Liver. I mean, liver is arguably the most nutrient-dense food on the planet. It contains over 25 vitamins and minerals and enzymes and all of the good stuff that you need for optimal energy levels, immunity, bone and dental health, and a lot of other things. So that's really my go-to organ. It's also the one that you can find the easiest, I would argue. A lot of stores have liver. We're going to talk about that in a bit. But it's a great way to just bolster your overall micronutrient intake, kind of like a, a multivitamin, if you will. Lung tissue is rich in vitamin C and B12, or B vitamins in general, but B12 in particular. It also has a lot of copper, iron, phosphorus, potassium, selenium, and zinc. Again, all important for immunity, for metabolism, for proper cell function, and a lot of other things in the body. The pancreas is a great source of digestive enzymes, uh, and those are important for breaking down the carbohydrates, the fats, and the proteins of the food that you consume. So for example, pancreatic tissue has amylase, has lipase, has protease, has trypsin, all of those enzymes that help break down what you eat so your digestion functions more optimally and you have less potential issues if you have low enzyme levels. There are a lot of people, especially those that come from a plant-based diet and start incorporating meat that might feel you know, nauseous when they consume too much protein or fat or just not well in their stomach. And that's usually because they have low enzyme levels or even, you know, low bile juices or juice levels. And so by consuming pancreatic tissue, you can get some of those natural enzymes that help break down the food that you eat. Prostate contains a lot of the building blocks that are important for a healthy prostate tissue. So if you're, you know, getting of age, if you're older, like I'm 41 now, you know, it's time to think about prostate health. And so by consuming prostate every so often, you can make sure you get all of the nutrients that your own prostate needs to function optimally. Spleen is arguably the best source of heme iron. Just one tiny serving of spleen has most of the iron that you need. It's also very rich in vitamin C and selenium, again, important for immunity. And it has specific peptides that support proper immune function, like splenin, Tufsin, Spleno, uh, Pentin, etc. So that's one of the reasons why I make spleen a regular part of my diet, especially during the colder months of the season. Thymus contains a lot of proteins that make disease-fighting T cells. So again, another way on how you can support your immune system and make sure it functions optimally. You know, not by overreacting, not by underreacting, but by responding to potential pathogens and allergens in an appropriate way. Thyroid tissue is a rich source of type 2 collagen. 
So that's important for joint and skin health. Other little building blocks that are important to allow your body to make its own collagen, you know, by rearranging amino acids. And so if you have joint issues, maybe if you have issues with elastic or lack of elastic skin and those kind of things, you know, consuming thyroid might help get some of those, not only the building blocks for collagen, but collagen directly into your body to mitigate some of the issues your body might have making its own collagen in, in insufficient amounts. Tongue, it's arguably the best tasting organ. Our kids love beef tongue. And it's not only delicious and super, so I mean, it's like a steak, like a, like a filet really, when you cook it properly, even though it looks a little bit iffy when you, when you peel off you know, the layers of the tongue before slicing it. But the meat itself is absolutely delicious. And it's uh, rich in fatty acids and zinc and iron and choline and B12s. It has a lot of those nutrients that are important for optimal health. Now, the question is, you know, where do you buy organs generally? Well, we usually buy one cow every year. And so we get all the organs, most of them, not all of them, from the butcher. And so we just eat them, you know, throughout the year. But also we supplement with liver and heart and kidneys and some of the other organs that we readily find around here, you know, by buying them at the farmer's market in summer or from spring to fall. Usually here in our area, we have a farmer's market. So we just go there and we find those organs. We find them, you know, beef organs as well as bison. I actually prefer bison liver. It tastes way better than beef liver, in my opinion. So I, especially when eating, when, when eaten raw, I buy bison liver and just slice it and eat it raw. Um, you can also find it in Indian grocery stores. Now, of course, you're not going to find beef organs there, but you can find goat organs in Indian uh, grocery stores. We have one, one around here. It's called Suvida, and they have anything from testicles. Um, actually, testicles I didn't mention, but that's another great you know, organ that can in particular help with as a you know, male enhancement kind of thing because it's, it actually has some of those sex hormones stored in the testicles that when you consume them, you can get some of those into your body as well to potentially improve your own testosterone levels, for example. So at Indian grocery stores, they have goat testicles, they have liver, they have heart, they have kidney, they have spleen, they have a lot of those different organs from goats. We also can buy them at online uh, or at farms that ship and, and have online presence, like White Oak Pastures is one of them, where you can buy almost all of the organs that are not USDA regulated. So there are some glands that, you know, you they cannot sell, but most of them, liver, heart, kidneys, etc., you can find uh, at White Oak and some of the, the other regenerative farms that sell online. Or you can also find them in freeze-dried capsules. And that's really our main source of organ meat, especially for the kids. But we'll talk about it here in a sec when we, uh, when we chat about how to consume them. I already mentioned I prefer my organs if I trust the source, if, it's, if they are fresh organs, just raw, in particular the liver, because I don't like the taste of cooked liver. It's a little bit too metallic um, and I don't bother, you know, with soaking it in, in milk or whatever. I just, you know, slice it up and have it raw. Um, you can even, one of the, the best ways to do that is to you know, you can slice it or make it turn into little cubes, then freeze those cubes individually. And whenever you need a, you know, a bit of liver, you just grab a cube from the freezer and, you know, just swallow the whole thing if you don't want to deal with chewing it and if you don't like the taste or the texture. That's one way. Uh, again, I prefer it raw most of the time. Otherwise, some of the other organs like kidneys and heart, um, I either grill, heart in particular, it's a muscle meat. Kidneys, you know, my, my wife typically pan fries. Um, and we have it with, you know, with whatever we eat as a, as a side dish, so to say, or maybe even as the main protein. Last time we had kidney, it was the main protein for me. Um, so you can cook it pan fried, you know, you can, you know, do the traditional way with onions if that's what you like. I don't, my stomach doesn't do well with onions, but a lot of people like that in particular liver. You can mix it with ground meat. That's really an excellent way to sneak it into your diet. If you don't like the taste or the texture, we have done it with the kids a lot. Just make, you know, meatballs and sneak in a little liver or a little heart or a little whatever it might be, you know, depending on how sensitive they are, how good their taste buds are, they might not even notice, or it might just taste a little bit different. And you can mitigate that, you know, with ketchup or whatever, you know, for your kids. But for us, typically, you know, we don't, you know, we notice it, but it's not that, you know, off-putting, even if you don't like the taste of liver. So that's a great way to sneak it in. You can also just consume pate. You know, uh, either buy it or make it yourself. Um, I often make the pate myself or I, I find it at the grocery store. And that's a, another great way of getting more liver into your diet without necessarily having to deal with the taste or the texture. The most convenient way, arguably, is uh, consuming freeze-dried uh, capsules. I sell 
freeze dried beef organ meat capsules at MK supplements. That's really the most convenient way because they're absolutely tasteless. You know, they're in gelatin capsules. You just swallow four capsules a day and you get the equivalent of one ounce of fresh organ meat. You know, the kids love it. More at least they don't mind taking it. Not that they love the capsules because they don't taste like anything, but at least they don't mind. So they take them every day. Um, we all take them every day. And then I just supplement with fresh organs whenever I have um, access to them. Now, that's pretty much it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, let me know what you could have done better. I'll see you next time.